About a week ago, I was going to bed and I had a really interesting thought. I thought, what if I rated my entire board game collection by sight? Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure about how that was going to work at the time. But the more I pondered about it, I thought, mm, not only is it a good way to kind of share a quick review of what I think about the games in my collection, and I guess some of my early impressions, and also how I feel about a game, especially with some of those that I haven't played yet in my collection. And so I thought, you know what? Let's do this. Let's point to games, rate them really literally off the cuff, and maybe just share and express how I feel about some of them. Hi, my name's Danny. I'm an avid modern board gamer from Australia loves sharing my passion for this hobby with you, my friends, and my family. Come join me for this journey. I know when I play board games with my hubby, we often use a out of four rating system, a one, two, three, or four. And it's kind of a really good way of trying to hone in and force you to actually make a decision or a rating. You're not allowed to give half ratings, so there's none of this like 3.5 or a 2.5. You actually have to commit to a whole number out of four because that really definitively kind of expresses how you feel about the game. And I think that's really good and I think I might use that system here. So four out of four would be like a really fantastic game that really does well in what it sets out to do. Uh, a three out of four would be like above average. Two would be just average, maybe just passable. And a one would be, uh, we don't like it, it's gonna leave the collection. First game I'm gonna rate is up there. And it is a game called Planted, where you're drafting plant cards. For me, it's a four out of four. Barcelona got to play this one recently. For me, it was a four out of four, but the hubby only rated it a three out of four. I really love what it does takes some mechanics from some of the other board and dice games and really just hones in and gives you some really cool branching choices. Rajas of the Ganges is a four for me. Marrakesh is a four. Santorini was probably a four, but I think it's dropped now down for me to a two. Kalis for me, I really love what it does. Really love the kind of moving the provost up the track and blocking things. I think for me at this point, it's a two. Uh, we're really going fast and furious right now. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, Yokohama, for me, it's a three. Uh, Rats of Wista, for me, I haven't really played this yet. So my impressions or initial impressions of it is a maybe a two or three. Oh, and then we've got Aqua Garden. Aqua Garden here probably would be a four. Root for me would probably be a one. Yes, one. Oh, I'm really on the fine line with that. Viticulture, a four, definite four. I would give it a five if I could. And Tuscany, definitely a four out of four. On the next row, we have the Stonemaier game, Apiary. I definitely would give this a four out of four and look forward to an expansion coming soon. And then I've got Ticket to Ride Europe, which is a four out of four. Great Western Trail, four out of four. Oh my goodness, there's actually a lot of fours. Oh, but I guess this probably is like my sh showcase shelf, I guess. Whistle Stop, I would probably say is a three out of four. It just needs to be a little bit better for me to be able to bring it out to the table a little bit more often. But uh, Magalev Metro, I really like its innovation, but I think at this point it's a two out of four. I haven't really gotten it merged to the table yet, but for me at this point, my initial impressions of it is going to be a three out of four. I'll let you know how I feel after I play it. And then behind here we have rectangular shaped games. Ooh, Atawa. I think that would be a three out of four. Really love the like cascading kind of use of resources. Arborea, haven't played it yet. Uh, very excited to get this to the table. Very big fan of like games like Botoku. Just my knowledge of the game would be a three out of four until I play it. Grand Austria Hotel. Ooh, I think that would probably be a three out of four. Um, I think this is a little bit of a learning curve to some of the guests' abilities and uh, just how it plays out. It's very tight. Uh, in Castles of Burgundy, a four out of four, for sure. And then we have the lovely Botoku. This is definitely, hands down, a four out of four for me. Ooh, Bonfire, Stefan Feld. Ooh, 
A lot of pieces, really thinky strategy. Oh, I definitely think it's a three out of four for me. Uh, Imhotep. Oh, uh, this cool um, moving ships, placing your blocks and ships, and then satisfying different like building criteria. Ooh, high player interaction, this one. I would definitely say it's a three out of four for me. Takenoko, oh, one of my early favorite games, one of the first games I ever bought, probably a three out of four. Bit clunky with the objectives, I think. Uh, Terracotta Army, big game from like years ago, but uh, a lot of kind of like black and white reviews for this, some really positive, some really negative. For me, it was actually a really positive experience. It actually exceeded my expectations. I think I would say it's a three out of four for me. Oaken the Mayan Calendar, the first ever T-Series games I, I ever bought. Really, really didn't like it on my first go at it, but I'd probably say now it ranks a lot more highly. I would probably say it is a three out of four. Above and below. Really loved the premise of like, kind of like a choose your own adventure, building a village. Probably say above and below would be more like a two out of four. Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun. My hubby brought me these amazing upgrades for my birthday a couple years back. I probably would say Tekenu would be a two out of four, mainly because I don't feel each of the regions is that well balanced. Ancient world, oh, I describe it like Attack on Titan. Um, this one I definitely would say is a four out of four. Habanusi. Builders of Ur, haven't played it yet. Uh, just wanted to fill out my T-Series collection. Probably say it's a two at this point. Just initial knowledge of what the game does. Near and far, wasn't as keen on this one. Did really build the world a little bit better, but I thought the gameplay could have been stronger and a bit more focused. Probably a two out of four. Heotuakan, City of Gods. Oh, wow. Except for the mask strategy, I think the rest of this game is actually really brilliant. I'm gonna give this a three out of four. I was gonna say four out of four, but I think the mask strategy does move it down a pip and it does make it feel probably less balanced. Now or never, haven't played this very much, but I would probably say at this point it's a three out of four. Tawan Tinsuyu, uh, what a... Very uh, big game to kind of get your head around. I've played this solo multiple times. Uh, I would probably say this one would be a three out of four. Just very thinky and brain burning. I would bound. I did a whole like video where I went to the beach for this and it kind of was the first Euro where it kind of felt like you had free range to sail wherever you wanted to sail to. Probably give this one a three out of four. I thought I might just lie down for this next bit. So, Life of the Amazonia, I heard it's kind of like a more complex Cascadia. Haven't actually played it too much, so I'd probably say this is a three out of four. Reef is a really cool abstract game where you're deciding between taking the reef pieces or your scoring conditions. Reef, I think I would give probably a four out of four, especially with the fish expansion. Wingspan. I actually really, really love Wingspan for all its clunkiness and uh, scope that it's got. I definitely think Wingspan for me is a four out of four. Bonsai, haven't played it yet. I really love the idea of growing these bonsai trees. My early impressions of knowing what the game does is probably gonna be like a three out of four. Hmm, I have a love-hate relationship with this game, uh, mainly because there are a few little issues that I encountered when I bought my copy. I'm not sure that's really um, kind of given it in its favor, but I definitely think for me at this point, it's a three out of four. Oh, the classic is all four out of four for sure. Do you like what it does with its tableau building and the little tree building aspect of it? And Summer Pavilion, I think it's a really good extension of the original game, but I think I'd give it a three out of four at this point. Everdale wasn't was a game where I was not very impressed at the two player count, but then when I played at four players, I was like, Ah, this is where this game shines. So I think Everdell for me would be a three out of four. But Azul Queen's Garden, it ranks just as highly up with the original Azul, so I'm giving that a four out of four. Now onto this green potted shelf. Arboretum, four out of four for sure. Really tough choices, very difficult. Uh, Tiny Epic Quest, I'm going to give a two out of four. Too fiddly for me, but love the Legend of Zelda vibe. Aqua, really love its puzzly nature. 
At this point, I think it's probably a two out of three, just because it's definitely more puzzly than thematic. Fox in the Forest, not a fan of trick-taking games, probably a two out of four. Hannah Makoji, really loved it a long time ago. At the moment, it's probably dropped to a two out of four for me. Family game of 2023, definitely a four out of five. Verdant, love the uh, plants, cards, and then placing little items. Uh, really great uh, game from Flat Out Games. I think I would give Verdant a four out of five. Flip City, I just love the idea that you can kind of push your luck in this game to build this card-based city with different abilities and scoring. Um, I really like the fact that it's got two different win cons. Uh, I'd probably say it's a two out of four. Calico, part of the same kind of series. Calico, I think, was a little bit tougher for me just because the market was too restrictive. So I'm gonna give Calico a three out of four and Haven, I'm gonna say is a three out of four. So rating these games is pretty tough and, but pretty exciting actually, because it actually allows me to reflect on where these games sit. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Start from this top pile of games. We've got The Finest Fish, which is an abstract Azul style game about building scales and fish. Probably a two out of four. Then I've got Jamaica. It's getting a little bit dark over here. We can see the reflection of the uh, fish tank. Jamaica is probably a two out of four. Not particularly balanced. And if you're falling behind, there's not really a good catch up mechanism. Zoo Tycoon, love the theme, love the production. Very, very clunky rules. Um, very, very, uh, feels very much like account keeping. So Zoo Tycoon for me is gonna be a two out of four. Pandemic, probably a two out of four. Inish, one of my favorite dudes on the map, area control style game. Inish, I probably give a four out of four. Rising Tide, probably a two out of four for me. Bit too many rules, feels a bit too different. Reign of Cthulhu, probably my favorite version of Pandemic. Uh, I'd give that a three out of four, just cause you can kind of go insane in the game. Cyclades, I'm going to give a three out of four. Uh, it's got all these cool Greek gods and heroes that you can get, but very Euro-y still, but finishes really, really quickly. Uh, and Pandemic Iberia, maybe a three out of four. Settlers of Catan, for me, I think it was a great introductory game to the hobby, but I think it would probably be a two out of four, just because I do not like the randomness of the dice or resources. The game tends to drag uh, when you um, are too far behind. And Cities and Nights expansion is a must have. I'd definitely say that's a three out of four. De Probably not my style of game where you buy little God power cards um, and you've got these little cool pyramids that, uh, which are essentially D4s. I think it's gonna be a two out of four for me. Village, really love Marcus and Inca's brands designs, love the Exit Game series. But Village for me, I think at this point is gonna be a two out of four just cause I loved the original aesthetic of the original version of the game. This is then I've got this really cool drop it style game, which is like a dexterity game where you're trying to not touch the same color or same shape. I'm gonna give drop it a three out of four just because of how unique it is. Nova, that's a four out of four for me, but I wish the tr ticket track on the outside was a little bit shorter. In God's Distant Skies, three out of four from what I've played so far. Uh, Glenmore Chronicles 2, haven't played it, but I really like the sound of what it does. So at the moment, I'm saying it's a three out of four. Got a uh, Cascadia. Uh, this might divide people, but I think I'm giving a Cascadia a two out of four. I just doesn't hasn't really gelled with me that well and with the people I've played it with. And then I've got Tiny Towns for me. Probably one of my favorite Euros to play at six players because there's not many quick, fast playing Euros at six. So I'm gonna give uh, Tiny Towns a four out of four. Scythe, I would also like to play more. So I'm gonna say it's a three out of four. And King of Monster Island, I think is probably the best of the King of Tokyo, King of Monster series. It is cooperative, but yeah, it's so brutally tricky, but there's a lot of variation. So I'm giving that one a three out of four. Oh, I'm totally working up a sweat here. <laughs> Uh, so my shelfie probably would be a three out of four. Rainforest City, really cool game about uh, the habitat environment in Singapore. Probably say it's a three out of four. Turing Machine, really love the design of it. Um, haven't played it too much. I think over time, I think it would probably just be a two out of four, maybe a one out of four, just cause it doesn't really give me that social interaction, but it is a great solo game. Age Rails, I'd definitely say it's a three out of four. Looney Quest, a three out of four. Super fun game if you love Mario and Donkey Kong. Then we've got The Grizzled. Oh my goodness, what a thematic, tense, 
punishing game, I'd probably say that's a three out of four. Then I've got Between Two Castles, had it on my shelf for ages and finally got to play at the five player count. Three out of four, but the counting at the end of the game, oh my goodness, took us half an hour to work out all the points. Uh, walking Burano drafting game. I actually been to Burano in Italy, um, but I'd say it's a three out of four just because there's a few too many moving parts. Uh, Revive, good use of multifunctional cards, three out of four. Uh, Toledum, I probably would say is a two out of four. Feels too similar to a lot of the other board and dice games. Could be a little bit more thematic. Oh, Hidden Leaders. Uh, this is the prototype original copy that I got to review for the Kickstarter campaign. I would say it's a three out of four. Lost Expedition, love the art, but super punishing as well. Three out of four. A oh, Woodcraft, ah! Four out of four, love it. Uh, Guild of Merchant Explorers, four out of four, love. Uh, really evokes that cartographer in me and I love drawing my own maps. Ever Explorers, two out of four. And Lotus, two out of four, where you're kind of like drafting petals and making flowers. Evolution, I would say is a four out of four. Although at the four player count, it can get a little bit cutthroat. So definitely prefer it uh, more at the two player count. Spicy, bit of bluffing and lying, probably two out of four. Buffet boss, food stacking game, probably a three out of four. Great to break the ice. Suburbia, one of the first city building euros that got me into um, this hobby, I'd probably say is a four out of four. La Granja, the Deluxe Master set is a four out of four for me. Farmer's Market, three out of four, very thinking mathematical. Isle of Trains, a uh, really great engine building game where you multi-use cards. I definitely would be saying it's a, ooh. For me, it was a three out of four, but I think it's now dropped to a two. And Evergreen, which is basically the photosynthesis game killer, would probably say is a three out of four for me. Uh, Lanterns, two out of four, very simple. Uh, based on a uh, tile triggering game where based on where you sit around the table. Not sure why, but I'm going to do this next bit lying down. Uh, just so you can see, this is the original Sleeping Gods. <laughs> this was a really weird perspective. Uh, Sleeping Gods, uh, four out of four for sure. Little Town, four out of four. And Stone Age in one of the first worker placement games. Ooh, too much mathematical scoring, a three out of four. King Domino, a two out of four. Probably too simplistic for my taste right now. Septima, beautiful looking game. Probably doesn't flow as well. Three out of four. There's no turning back now because we've got this whole pile and this whole pile to go through, not to mention some games in the cupboards. Holy dooly, what have I got myself into here? Tiwanaku is like a deduction game. I'd probably say it's a three out of four. Next is the top of this shelf. <laughs> so high. Uh, sea salt and paper, definitely a four out of four. Five out of four, I think. I would give that. Ginkopolis, three out of four. Vanuatu, it's a bit too punishing for me, I think. I love the theme and the components and the way it looks. Uh, probably would be a two out of four. Taji, I'd probably say it's a three out of four. Juicy Fruits. Very lovely theme, very colorful. Probably could do a little bit more. Probably a two out of four. Canopy, a three out of four. Mind Bug, probably a ooh, three out of four as well. And Obsession, haven't played it yet, but from what I've heard, it's a very thematic worker placement style experience. My initial impressions of that, it's probably gonna be a three out of four, but two out of four. <laughs> Paris La Cité de la Lumière, definitely a four out of four. Patchwork, two out of four. The thing about doing this kind of review is you can be quite heavily brutal. So, oh gosh, um, maybe my opinions about these games will change later. <laughs> now onto like my word games. Uh, so before we got a squeeze in Rewindow, haven't played it, but I'm expecting it to be about a three out of four. Jaipur, Mm, probably two out of four. Nagaraja, four out of four. Duel, two out of four. Oh, Sail, a uh, bit hard to get your head around the rules, but a three out of four. Oh gosh, there's a lot of twos I'm giving for these two player games. Curious Cargo, very complex for a two player game. Three out of four. Land vs Sea, definitely a four out of four. Colorful, I actually think it's a three out of four. Sky Team, four out of four. Sobek, Probably two out of four. Codenames Duet, a four out of four. B and Bread, a three out of four. And then I've got Artifacts Inc, three out of four. Then I've got Lost 
uh, Eight Minute Empires, which I would say is probably a ooh, two out of four. Rome, two out of four. Muse, two out of four. Harmonies, oh, a three out of four. Pachacuna, probably a two out of four. Four out of four for So Clover. Haven't played Last Message, really tried to get this tabled. And we are racing down to this middle shelf. Uh, Sprolopolis, I'd probably say it's a great two player game, so three out of four. Two out of four. Trap Words, played this a couple of times. Actually, a little bit more uh, gamery than I thought, so probably two out of four. Hanabi, three out of four. Istanbul, four out of four. Two out of four. Four out of four. Four, out of four. Four, 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 four for this one. I love Decrypto, Letter Jam, four out of four. F Canvas, Really tried to table this one, probably a two out of four. Fun facts, four out of four. Master Word, probably a three out of four. Terraforming Mars, a four out of four. This next one requires me to get down to palm shrimp tree level, maybe. Oh, Messina, 1347, uh, probably a four out of four. Aki, ooh, if you ask my hubby, it's a one out of four, but for me, it's a, ooh, it's probably gone from a four out of four to a three out of four, actually. Um, you'll see in a later part that I'm actually selling my second edition. Underwater Cities, uh, three out of four, just because um, in this version, when you touch the table, everything kind of moves, but I know the expansion has got like a recess player board. I've got Quacks of Quedlinburg, which is a four out of four. Clans of Caledonia, probably three out of four. Oh, Great Western Trail, New Zealand, one of my favorite from the trilogy, four out of four. White Castle, four out of four. Red Cathedral, three out of four. Alchemist, a little bit too clunky, two out of four, but I love the app, like, um, potion deduction. Bamboo, ooh, ooh, was one of my anticipated games. I really, really wanted to play it. I have played it, ooh, but I probably think it's a bit too finicky with the rules. Mm, I'm actually borderlining it a two out of four, actually. Meadow, two out of four, a bit too simplistic, not enough breadth or depth to it. Parks, four out of four, love parks. Gardens, actually a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be, so a two out of four. Marchi Koro two, two out of four. Rapa Nui, haven't played it. My initial impressions of how it works is a two out of four. Viscounts of the West Kingdom, haven't really played it. Uh, seems a little bit overwhelming with the symbology and um, seems a little bit deeper. D uh, a little bit, uh, sorry, more complex than I thought, so probably gonna go two out of four for that one. Gods Love Dinosaurs, four out of four for me, just because I love the nature theme and food chains and stuff like that. And Raiders of the North Sea, definitely a four out of four. Then we've got Wayfarers of the South Tigris, probably a three out of four. Then we're going down to Spirit Island, which is a four out of four, though I haven't tabled that one recently. Discoveries, which is a cool little dice um, exploration game uh, based on Lewis and Clark. Uh, three out of four. Dis Empires of the North, I love the original game. Haven't really had a chance to play this, but apparently it's a lot better. So I'm gonna just come in at a three out of four for what I know about it. Exception Murder in Hong Kong, three out of four. Too easy to identify who the murderer is. Five Tribes, bit of analysis paralysis, really cool puzzle. I'm gonna go three out of four. Uh, Fields of Green, three out of four, great synergy. Potion Explosion, where you kind of clash marbles together and fill in potions and then get extra abilities. I'd probably say three out of four, although I've got kind of like the cardboard uh, dispen marble dispenser, so it tends to fall apart a lot. Dinosaur World, great theme, great ID, great production, but too many little finicky bits. So probably a two out of four. Lewis and Clark, three out of four. Wanna play this a whole lot more. Explorers of Navoria, this one is a four out of four. 100% love this game. Uh, it's very Euro-y, uh, so easy to get into, and lots of really cool, simple yet deep choices. Uh, unfair, probably a three out of four, but because you have to get all these little expansion modules and there's a bit of uh, configuring, probably uh, it's gone down a little bit for me. Praga uh, Kaput Regni, beautiful Vladimir Suchi game, really interesting art, but I think uh, for me, it's dropped from a three to a two. In behind, let's not look at this uh, 10 by 10 chart. We've got uh, Kanagawa, probably two out of four. Draftosaurus, I mean, I got it during COVID, so I'm not sure if that was the best idea, passing handfuls of dinosaurs around and germs as well. So two out of four. Imperial Settlers, love it, three. Dragon Castle, 
Uh, really love the idea of it. Haven't really played it, so I'm coming in at a two. And Mexica, I've had this game for so long, I just keep holding on to it because of the components. But um, because I haven't been able to table it for years, I think this is going to be a two. Kohahu, a three out of four, very surprising. Forbidden Desert, definitely a four out of four for Expand City, probably a two, no, three. Three, very easy, engaging, but uh, interesting choices. And as you can see, I'm a little bit roughed up and ready to scale this tower. Come back, come, 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 come back, okay, 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 okay. We'll start on this level. Uh, so Art Society, four out of four. Got the lovely worm span, probably a three out of four for me. The trail at House of the Hill, you can see how warm this copy is. Got a lot of plays out of it, a four out of four. It's four out of four. Clarifus, oh, I give it a three. Pictures, four out of four. Herbaceous, a three. Camel Up probably says a two out of four. Haven't played Delicious, probably a two. Abyss, probably a ooh, three out of four. Quest for El Dorado, three out of four, four. Almost Innocent, haven't played it yet. Probably my initial impressions of what I know about the deduction side of it. Probably a three out of four. Decourt, probably a two out of four. Forum. Four out of four. I have played this a lot. Not only with my hubby, but with other people. Dune Imperium, a four out of four. Small World, a three out of four. Lost Ruins, I love, 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 love the theme. I'm probably gonna say it is a three out of four. Mice and Mystics, probably one of the first kind of dungeon crawling board games I got. I would say is, ooh. Its rules do move it down probably to a three out of four. Chronicles of Avil, really great family cooperative game, probably a three out of four. Then we've got First Contact. If you've ever seen the movie The Arrival, this is probably one, a game that simulates that, a two out of four. Clank, a three out of four. Crew, ooh, I would say is a three out of four, just because I love the theme and the kind of, it's quite um, mean in terms of the area control. Uh, ooh, what is this cool little one? It's the big book of monsters, probably a two out of four. Glow, two out of four. Hive, four out of four. Play this so much with big groups. In fact, that uh, we don't even take the box anymore, we just take the cards with us. Elevate it up a little bit. Coffee Rush, probably a two out of four. Uh, Modern Art, two out of four. King of Tokyo, two out of four, especially at the really high play counts. Perspectives, a Ooh, it's not very replayable, but the game experience itself is so good. I would say it's a four out of four for me. Look, art, a uh, three out of four. Just really love how unique the pieces are. Did three out of four. Interesting fact about junk art is they uh, basically laid out lots of different pieces and then whittled it down to the 20 that appear in the game. Kowaddle, two out of four. Blue Witness, four out of four. Lagoon, two out of four. Wavelength, two out of four. Honey Buzz, three out of four. Earth, four out of four. Pyramido, probably a two out of four. Oh man, this is tricky, but uh, like necessary. I think even in my mind now, I've just got like this rank of like where every game sits for me. Llama Land, I love Llama Land, four out of four. And Alexander Fister's game, Isle of Sky, four out of four. Oceans is probably a three out of four. Carcassonne is probably a two out of four for me, probably not my favorite. Moe's, yeah, it's all right, two out of four. Steampunk Rally, the hubby's favorite Euro game, four out of four. Take World's Fair, this is an underrated Euro gem, a four out of four. Take your highway, too fiddly. I'm not sure if the new edition fixes this, but that's a two out of four. Sagrada's probably a two out of four for me. Quirky Circuits, very great cooperative programming game, probably a three out of four. I know, I know, there's so many more games in here. Holy dooly. Antidote, three out of four. City Iron, three out of four. Th four out of four for Insider, two out of four for this game, four out of four for Hive, three out of four, four out of four, just lots of laughs. Uh, two out of four, two out of four, three out of four. Oak, probably a two out of four. Too much symbology involved. And then I've got these two piles, which are unfortunately kind of like my cell pile. That's not a hat. Definitely a one out of four for me, unfortunately. Men at Work, a two out of four. And Dead of Winter, two out of four. Three out of four, bit bored of Cockroach Poke. Actually, no, two out of four for me for that. Uh, probably a two out of four. Forever Home. Uh, was a two, but I think it's dropped to a one, a bit too abstract. Like Robinson Crusoe, I've got the Z-Man version. I'd probably say it's a two out of four. 
two out of four, two out of four, two out of four, two out of four, I think. Grand Heart, I've got the Master Deluxe version, so that's probably a one for me, although I'm still contemplating. This kind of pile kind of symbolizes, maybe I might change my mind, decide to keep it. That one's definitely a one pile for me, ready to sell. Uh, some very good games here, like Carcassonne, Habitats, um, and Raccoon Tycoon, very good games, but they just don't really fit in kind of the style of games that I really like. I think Carcassonne is probably my saddest one to get rid of. Everything medium actually was a little bit, was quite fun. Two out of four for that. Gulk Hollow, really unique game of like, uh, David vs. Goliath, probably three out of four. Horrified, great production, three out of four. Roll for the Galaxy, three out of four. Uh, just because my hubby doesn't really play cooperative games that much, so uh, yeah, had to sell that. Iki, oh, do I have a few little gripes with this version? First of all, it's very polished compared to the Hokusai style. Therefore, for this, very big rules hurdle. Synthesis, photosynthesis, I love this at the time, probably two out of four, which I have right here. And I think the original one just feels a lot more simpler and straightforward. This one, the board, there's no way you can sit around the board where you can see everything in the same direction. I'm not really sure why they did it, where the top half and the bottom half of the board are slightly upside down. I mean, it's a great production, but it just, there's, there's too much extra bits going on here. Like even the player slip, I mean, I don't really need that. Just a little uh, summary card would have done. So I'm really happy of just keeping this version. Empires of the Void, still yet to dive into that. Probably a two out of four for me at this point. And then this game, I think it's just more that they needed more depth. I've got other games that really just do the same thing with a better theme. And uh oh, uh oh, better hide this one. Um, not much of a fan of Agricola, unfortunately, so sorry. That was a little bit of a wild experience. Uh, all in all, that video probably took about four and a half hours to make. I took breaks in between because I was literally just sweating, just pulling out all the boxes, going down on my stomach and just like trying to just decide what am I going to review? What am I going to give these game scores? And you know what, I'm sure there's like two or three games I've just literally skipped over. I'm so sorry if there was a game that you wanted to know more about. Uh, please let me know in the comment section below if there's other games you want to hear a little bit more detail, especially my opinions about. Um, I love to start a conversation, but yeah, that was so, super tough. Um, I think forcing myself to do that was probably therapeutic in itself because it kind of made me my mind think, okay, really love these are my top T1 games and these games I'm kind of like on the cusp for. So if there is a new game that comes along, I tend to be like, okay, maybe this two out of four game really for me is a one out of four. So I'm gonna put it in the sell pile. So yeah, um, if you really love this collection snapshot video of me just pointing to random boxes and giving them numbers out of four, then please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Would really appreciate it. I mean, I do all of this uh, on the lowest of budgets. Uh, I basically have just a camera and I just talk into a camera and then I copy my video files into a uh, film editor like iMovie and then upload it. So it's just purely out of passion that I do this and it brings me so much enjoyment to be able to connect with you and other people in the board gaming community. So yeah, share this video with your friends. Maybe there's something that you enjoyed. Uh, share a story with me. I'd love to see your board game collection as well. Uh, this is Danny signing out. Oh, and don't forget, if you want to see more board game content, head over to my main page or head over to my Patreon page to support me there. Otherwise, this is me, Danny signing out. I was going to say me for some reason. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.